Final day of training camp, Miami Dolphins fans. Kind of weirdly what I consider a, a sad day. I am. I just love training camp reports. I love just player development and progress that we get to see throughout the offseason. But all in all, I mean, week one is just right around the corner now, so I guess I sh probably shouldn't be complaining. But, yeah, one more preseason game, obviously, on Saturday against the Jags. Leading up to that week one matchup against the Chargers, we're briefly going to touch on that game against the Jags as part of our uh, training camp report from the day. But before I get into today's action, because I've got like four two highlights and red zone touchdowns, we'll give a, a recap of all the action that we learned from the day. Got to hear from you. We're wrapping it up. Your thoughts on camp, your thoughts on today, your thoughts on the final 53-man roster, drop them in the comments. Let's carry on the conversation there. But like I alluded to, highlights today, offensively, a crisper day, a cleaner day, a sharp day for Tua and the Miami Dolphins offense. A couple now in a row. I did miss yesterday's report. Sorry for that. As you can see from the background, I'm traveling. I am in a hotel right now. So thank you for bearing with me. But we're going to get to those Tua highlights because there was a litter of red zone touchdowns today. An eight-yarder to Barrios, a four-yarder to Chosen, an eight-yarder to Tyreek, a two-yarder to Cedric. Basically, the last play of training camp, we went out on a high note. So let's just jump right into those highlights. I'm going to bear with me here as I bring these up on the screen. And as you can see there on that one, just a pretty simple, you, Barrios kind of leaves off the screen. That was the quick one to Barrios, but he leaves off the screen, probably runs a little bit of a jerk route, runs right back inside, wide open, Tua on the touchdown. Let's jump into the next one that we have. And you think about that play, and it doesn't look like it's all that complex, but I actually love that play for a couple of reasons. One, usually when we're in the red zone like that and we're split out, I think slants. It's like one of two of his best throws. We've done it multiple times since he's been here, especially in Mike McDaniel's offense. But he sees the blitz coming, and he realized, yo, if Chosen – beats his guy off the line of scrimmage. He gets that little fade in the back of the end zone. There's not any safety help. That's a one-on-one -on -one matchup. If I drop the ball in the bucket, that's going in for six. So I love to see that play as well. Let's go on to the next one. I believe this one is the touchdown to uh, Tyreek Hill. So another thing that I actually love about that is weird. I have a lot of, I have like a takeaway on all these plays. I love that play to Tyreek as well. Cause you think of Tyreek Hill and, and the world thing, speed, deep balls, big plays. Well, I tell you what, you get him in the red zone. And if Tua sees one-on-one -on -one coverage and you can throw back shoulders to a guy like Tyreek Hill as well. Once again, it's ball placement, it's accuracy, it's Tua being spot on. Add that to the arsenal though, in the red zone. Like I said, it's six damn near every single time. And the last one I have, like I said, that last play um, of camp, there was the touchdown to uh, Cedric Wilson. So there's that slant. Remember when I was talking about that, how said kind of the, the go-to sometimes in the red zone is that slant where you got other bodies working towards like the outside and corner of the end zone. That slant comes in. We saw it multiple times last year. But then you get Cedric Wilson on that one. You get the uh, the pretty sweet uh, dunk over the goalpost as well. So nice to see that. Like I said, crisp, sharp day, Tua and the offense. Um, outside of just highlights, some basic player reports as well. Um, Alec Ingold and Braxton Berrios also had red zone touchdowns from uh, Skylar Thompson. So a lot of uh, red zone work today, a lot of touchdowns in that red zone work. Love to see that. But of note, looking forward, like I said, we talk a little bit about Saturday's preseason game. Mike McDaniel said, as of now, leaning towards playing Tua at least a series 
but no more than a half. So I would expect that we'll see the starters. We'll, we'll see Tua in some capacity, maybe a series or two, maybe a little bit more. We'll see how it goes from there. But we will not see Mike White, who still in the concussion protocol, the late stage, has got a little bit of work today, but will not likely play in that preseason finale. Robbie Chosen, I said that touchdown at one point in time during a two-minute drill as well. He had three straight completions for Tua, so he's obviously making that strong case uh, for one of those wide receiver spots. And then interesting enough, we talked a little bit about this in the last video I did, but with Tanner Connor being activated from the PUP list, as late as he was, man, we're really trying to see what we have at the tight end position. Been super involved in yesterday's practice, the one I missed, um, the, the report on, and then again today. So I would expect to see him quite a bit on Saturday because we're, Soybert's still out. Other than Smythe, they don't really have anyone that's guaranteed a roster spot. So we're going to see Hill. We're going to see Higgins. We're going to see Tanner Connor. Saturday is a huge audition for all of these guys, especially Tanner Connor now that he's been activated uh, from the PUP list. Defensively, David Long had a stop of Raheem Mostert at the line of scrimmage. Um, this one actually goes back to the offense, but Alama Uluave, the undrafted free agent center, had two failed quarterback center exchanges with third string, currently third string quarterback James Blackman. So maybe it's a Dolphins thing. Maybe it's not just Connor Williams. Maybe we're just simply cursed in regards to the center position. But obviously you don't want to see that. Uh, Verone McKinley had a pass breakup on Tua on a pass to River Craycraft. Javon Holland noted for a pass breakup on a pass to Julian Hill. And then Raquan Davis, actually the uh, the team's orange jersey wear of the day, noted and credited with a sack today. And numerous beat reporters, and we've kind of seen it all throughout the offseason, his improvements as a pass rusher from the interior. He's obviously one of the bigger guys we have. We see him as like a run stuffer. But I think he was his freshman year in Bama, eight and a half sacks. Dude looked like a complete monster. Now the sack production at Bama did fall off. Obviously, we still took him in the second round. He still got high draft capital, but the sacks really haven't come through. But that's one thing that we've been noticing throughout training camp is his ability to get more of that pressure in the pass game as well. So we saw it today in camp. We'll see if we continue to see it as the regular season rolls in. Uh, injuries of note, I mentioned Saubert. Um, Zach Sealer didn't practice today. That's not expected to be anything serious. It's probably more of a rest thing. Obviously, Ramsey was out. Uh, Justin Bethel, Devon A. Chain remained out. Deshaun Hand had, uh, I think it was like a compression sleeve or something on his leg. So keep an eye on that. Braylon Sanders remains out. Jeff Wilson was not spotted. And then obviously Jalen Waddle, who they're going to play it safe with. Will be back by week one, was not playing today. And then just from a roster standpoint, released linebacker Mike Rose. And then they wave injured safety Miles Dorn. That made room for linebacker A.J. Johnson who I haven't actually had a ton of time to dive into. Just very little. What I know the basics so far was with the Denver Broncos. Had some pretty productive season. I think Pro Football Focus had him as uh, one of their, their top-graded linebackers. I don't remember which year it was now. Um, but was a free agent. Did spend some time with Vic Fangio as well. So I'm, I'm just assuming at this point in time that was probably a Fangio call more than anything. Like I said, I don't have a ton of information on him as we speak. But that is what I have for today. Like I said, thanks for all the support and everything throughout training camp. We'll be back previewing and recapping that Jaguars preseason game. We'll be doing some roster prediction stuff. We'll be doing some schedule prediction stuff. Still got a lot of stuff to get to before that week one game against the Chargers. That's what I've got for today, Dolphins fans. And until next time, Fins.